Following a request from the Roman Emperor Octavian Augustus, the great poet Virgil, who had been inspired by the Muses, recounted the adventure of the most famous Trojan hero, whose fame and glory were exceeded only by the great Hector, Prince of Troy. This hero's name was Aeneas, and his achievements would be echoed for millennia. After Hector's death at the hands of Achilles, Aeneas was given command of the Trojan armies that had been fighting the Greeks for ten years in front of the Trojan Wall. However, the gods finally appeared to favor the Trojans when the Greeks, having failed to overcome the sacred walls of Troy, set sail from their shores. All they left behind was a massive wooden horse as an offering to the gods. The great horse was carried as a trophy into the city of Troy itself, and a major celebration began to commemorate the great Trojan victory over the invading forces, putting a stop to a decade of conflict. In the still of the night, the bravest Achaean heroes emerged from the belly of the wooden horse and, shielded by the Shroud of Darkness, stormed and surprised the small garrison protecting the Trojan gates. Once the gates were open, thousands of Greek soldiers, who were in hiding, invaded the city and started the takeover and destruction of Troy. The streets of Troy witnessed a bloodbath like never before. Women, children, and the elderly were shown no compassion and were slaughtered with swords. Aeneas was sleeping peacefully in his room when the Greeks took the city. In his dreams, however, he was visited by the spirit of the glorious Prince Hector. The magnificent son of Priam told Aeneas to wake up because Troy had been invaded. Hector told him that it was his responsibility to protect the precious Trojan tradition and that he should take the sacred objects of Troy with him and find a new city with sturdy walls to protect them. Aeneas was appalled as the city he had fought for years burned to the ground before his eyes. It was now a doomed place. Aeneas donned his armor and went off to fight the Achaeans who were pillaging the glorious city. He and his men offered strong resistance to the Greeks, preventing them from advancing for a while. But the swarm of invaders was too much for so few men to stop, and realizing that Troy's fate was sealed, Aeneas pulled back as it was not his fate to die fighting inside the city of Troy. Aeneas rushed to fetch his wife Priusa and his son Ascanius, with whom he ran to save his old father. When he met the old and maimed Anchises, Aeneas tried to convince his father to leave Troy with him and fulfill his destiny of protecting Trojan tradition and culture. But his father had no intention of leaving his beloved country behind and living out his last days in exile. That was when a small flame rose above Ascanius' head, a clear sign from the gods. Anchises understood that it was the role of his family to preserve all the memories of their ancestors. He gave in to his son's pleas and decided to follow him wherever he went. Aeneas had to carry his crippled father on his back. Since he had been struck down by a thunderbolt from Jupiter for his pride, there was chaos in the Trojan streets, and Aeneas attempted to lead his family to the meeting point agreed with the other men who were trying to flee Troy. At that moment, a panicked crowd caused the hero to become separated from his wife. This would be the last time Aeneas would see his wife alive. Aeneas managed to reach one of the secondary gates that would allow him to escape from Troy but he realized that his wife had not kept up with him, and in despair, he decided to go back to search for her. It was then that the spirit of Creusa appeared and told Aeneas that her fate was not to follow them, for she was already dead. She asked him not to look for her and to continue on his path, where Aeneas would find greatness and glory. Ascanius wept in his father's arms, begging for the return of his mother, but there was nothing that could be done. Now Aeneas had to gather the surviving Trojans and devise a new plan for their future. Gathered at the foot of Mount Ida, Aeneas, his family, and the last remaining Trojans came together. Anchises reminded everyone of the ancient prophecy that said Aeneas would be the heir to the Trojan tradition, and that he was destined to found a new city where the descendants of Troy would multiply and conquer many lands. Aeneas would lead his people toward the unknown, in search of the destiny promised by the gods, 
This path would be filled with adventures and challenges. The departure of Aeneas and the Trojans in search of a new beginning marks the start of one of the most epic journeys in history. Thus begins the Aeneid, the founding story of a civilization that would leave its mark on history due to the greatness of its people.